Have you ever wondered how apps like TikTok and YouTube know exactly which videos to recommend to you? I mean, your feed isn't exactly comprised of just random videos, so there's gotta be a way that these apps predict which videos you would enjoy the most. Now, I've been making videos on the internet for a while now, and this question has puzzled me for the longest time. It was easy to make the connection that the more you watch a certain type of video, let's say sports highlights, then the more likely it would be for sports related videos to show up on your feed. But what determines exactly which videos get recommended to exactly which users? So today I'm here to explain to you how all of that works at a very high level. And for the sake of this video, I'll be focusing entirely on TikTok. So TikTok actually has a pretty unique way of figuring out what their users are interested in and making recommendations from there. It directly pushes general videos that are trending to new users, then fine tunes these recommendations by measuring engagement from this initial wave of recommended videos. For example, if I were a user logging into TikTok for the very first time, I'd see a wide variety of videos on my For You page. Some videos might not interest me that much, so I'd scroll past them really quickly, indicating a lack of interest, which TikTok makes note of. Let's say I love dogs and happen to not only watch through an entire video on dogs from start to end, but also go as far as to like and share the video. My engagement would indicate to TikTok that I love dogs, which would then recommend me similar videos that other dog lovers have liked in the past using a system called collaborative filtering. So this pretty much means that the more you use TikTok, the more their algorithm learns and the better recommendations you get. But wait, hang on just a second. What exactly is collaborative filtering? The goal of collaborative filtering is to predict what a user would enjoy given a data set of items, or in our case videos, as well as how much each user is attracted to each item. Now there are two main types of collaborative filtering, user-based and item-based, which I'll explain really quickly with the help of my good friends Yanni and Karen. In user-based collaborative filtering, the idea is to draw similarities between groups of people and make recommendations based on the premise that if two users are alike, then it's highly likely that user A will like something that user B likes. Let's say Yanni likes apples, oranges, and bananas. Karen, who only likes apples and oranges, but does not know bananas exist, is looking for new fruit recommendations. Since both Yanni and Karen like apples and oranges, we can consider them to be similar users with similar tastes in fruit. And in this case, it would be reasonable to recommend bananas to Karen, since it's the only fruit liked by Yanni, but not yet by Karen, meaning it's likely that Karen will also like bananas. Item-based filtering is a little different in that it looks at similarities between items rather than similarities between users. So going back to our example, since both Yanni and Karen like apples and oranges, then using an item-based filtering algorithm means we can consider apples and oranges to be similar items, that is, as long as enough people are interested in both fruits. We can then recommend apples to all who like oranges and oranges to all who like apples. So if I approach Yanni and Karen saying I only like apples, then with an item-based filtering algorithm, they would recommend me oranges. So both of these algorithms kind of have their pros and their cons. And keep in mind that these examples have been heavily simplified. So the primary strength of user-based filtering is that recommendations adapt to the behavior of a user. That pretty much means that a change in interests would eventually lead to a change in recommendations as well. However, the cost of this is an increase in the amount of computing power you need, which makes sense because the more your dataset grows, the more complex the math gets, and by extension, the more work your computer needs to do. On the other hand, there's item-based filtering, which typically takes less computation and is known for consistently yielding very high recommendation accuracy, but would only recommend content that tends to be popular across the board, meaning your feed wouldn't be as personalized. This also explains why sometimes you'd see the same exact videos on your For You page as all of your friends, and it honestly just wouldn't be that interesting if everyone were seeing the same things every single day. But despite how good collaborative filtering sounds, there still are a lot of edge cases that it's not super great at handling. For instance, some users known as gray sheep might have interests that don't necessarily align with any given group of people, which makes it really hard to give them meaningful recommendations. Another issue is known as cold start, which arises when there isn't enough data about a new user to be able to provide an initial recommendation. A lot of apps tackle this problem by prompting users to select their interests upon signing up in order to get a general sense of what they like. 
See, the beauty of collaborative filtering is that you don't necessarily need to classify videos and users in order to make half-decent predictions. In other words, apps that use collaborative filtering, like TikTok, are able to figure out what you're interested in without actually knowing what exactly it is you're interested in. This is why data scientists spend so much time optimizing these algorithms and solving all these different problems so that you, the user, are entertained every single time you open the app. And we can see the usage of collaborative filtering expand way beyond the world of social media as well. Netflix uses it to recommend you your favorite movies and shows. Spotify uses it to recommend you new music and new albums depending on your music taste. And even large e-commerce websites like Amazon use collaborative filtering to recommend new products to their customers. So the next time you boot up TikTok or any of these apps, take a second to appreciate all the other users in the world with similar interests as you. Because who knows, without them, maybe you wouldn't have discovered that new show, that new song, or even that new TikTok that made no sense whatsoever, but still somehow made you laugh really hard.